So in 1992, I had the great privilege of authoring a study called A Matter of Time, Risk and Opportunity in the Non-School Hours. This was a project of the Carnegie Council on Adolescent Development. And in that study, we were really trying to make a case to public policymakers and to social policy uh, innovators about the importance of the non-school hours in children's learning and healthy development. We were particularly concerned about young adolescents, young people in the 10 to 15 year old age range, and I would say that the vision that we articulated there is really very harmonious with the principles of learning in after school. We were talking there about principles of positive youth development, the idea that young people are agents of their own development, that they're not empty vessels that we're pouring information into, but that they're very active in the process of supporting their own learning and development. We said young people need access to engaging and challenging opportunities in the non-school hours, that they need access to positive relationships with peers and with adults, and that they need exposure to lots of new ideas and new experiences. We know that that period of time, that early adolescent period, is so important in the learning and development of our young people, and we said there is no substitute for active engagement in the learning process. I think the principles of learning in after school are relevant to after school, but also to all kinds of experiences that young people have, including the, the time that they spend in their classrooms. The principles have to do with active learning, with engaged learning, with self-directed learning. They have to do with young people being collaborative with one another and with adults who are uh, involved in the learning experiences. So I would say that there really shouldn't be any difference between good learning in school and good learning in after school. I think we've lost a lot of ground under No Child Left Behind and I think that we have violated a lot of those principles during our time in classrooms with children since 2002, since the passage of No Child Left Behind. I think we're going to get back to some better learning because I think that uh, we're seeing new research coming out that says there is an opportunity gap between poor children and wealthier children. We also know from lots of studies, in fact, Tim Shriver says there are 200 studies that tell us that good social and emotional learning supports cognitive learning. So I think we're getting back to the whole child, I hope we are. I think we've never lost sight of it in a lot of our youth development work and I believe in a lot of the work we're doing in community schools, which is what I'm currently involved in. But I'm heartened by the fact that several of our public intellectuals, people like Paul Tuff, people like Robert Putnam, are writing books about these issues and are calling our attention to the fact that good learning in school looks like good learning in out of school and that that learning pays attention to the whole child, to cognitive development for sure, but also to social, emotional, physical, and moral development. I think the learning and after school principles are related a lot to the work that's going on in public schools in some places. I would say that in the work that I'm currently involved in, that is in work in community schools, we're thinking very much about the relationship of the core instructional program, that is the work that schools are primarily responsible for. We're trying to link and integrate that work with the work of youth development organizations and other partners. So we're really trying to make sure that we're organizing our resources, our school and community resources around student success. And in the process, I think we're bringing the best of school reform together with the best of positive youth development. I'm happy to say that we're getting good results from that work. We're finding out that children in community schools attend school more 
They're more engaged in school. They're developing a whole array of skills. You know, when I think about the work in schools and I think about the work in youth development organizations, I always try to keep my eye on the end result, which for me is productive adulthood. We're trying to make sure that all young people have all the opportunities and the supports that they need to get to productive adulthood. And that means if they get to productive adulthood successfully, they're going to be able to earn a good living, they're going to be able to be responsible family members, and they're going to be able to contribute to the work of the larger society. And in a democratic society, that is a lot of responsibility and so young people really need to have a wide range of experiences and sometimes schools can't provide those experiences on their own they need to partner with community resources that's what we do in community schools when we talk about good learning in school and in after school sometimes we might think that's a big shift we might think wow Schools haven't done that in the past, or youth organizations haven't done that in the past. I'm not sure how much of a shift it really represents. I think that good education has always been grounded in the principles of learn that we see in learning and after school. It's just that we don't always practice what we preach. But I think we've known for a long time that active experiential learning is important that it's really important to challenge young people i think too many of our young people are bored in school and in fact we have data to suggest that you know there was that big national survey on student engagement a few years ago and i was really well i guess i'll say i was shocked but not surprised to find that a third of the students said they were bored in school because the work was too easy that is really troubling. So I think we have to make sure that as we work with young people in schools and in out of school settings, that we're focused on their learning, that we're focused on their total development, that we're thinking all the time about the end goal of productive adulthood. But I think learning has to be central to everything we're doing, both in school and in youth organizations. I think that all of the learning and after school principles are really, really important. I'm deeply committed to all five of them. I think my favorite of them, given my long-term interest in the needs of, of young people growing up in low-income neighborhoods, I am most in love with the principle about exposure, about expanding horizons. I think that is tremendously important and we know that that's where a lot of young people growing up in low-income neighborhoods, that's where they fall behind. And so I think it's incumbent on us as we work with young people to make sure that it isn't only rich children who get enrichment. You know, enrichment is really about exposure, experience, and engagement. And we know from studies going back 20 years that poor children tend to get over remediated and under enriched. And so I think the that the notion of exposing young people to experiences, to learning, to people and places and possibilities is maybe my number one favorite of the five. But I like all of them. I think they're all really, really important. I think that voice and choice have always been central to the way we as youth workers work. And I think this principle shows up in learning and after school about helping young people get engaged in activities that they themselves choose. You know, the way schools are structured these days, young people get very little choice. We know that electives have been cut out in a lot of school. We know that school, because of the standards, because of No Child Left Behind, schools have become much more highly structured with a curriculum that doesn't leave a whole lot of time for young people to make choices. So I think that as we work 
to develop the learning and uh, the, the healthy development of young people. It's important that we build choice into their lives wherever we can because we know that we're going to get a much deeper kind of engagement when young people have choice. In the work we do in community schools, I think that all five of the principles are really germane. We apply all five of those principles in our work in community schools. I think because we're expanding learning opportunities for young people, we're really giving them a chance to work toward mastery. They might be learning some skills in the classroom during the school day, and we're providing a chance for young people to practice those skills, maybe in a different way, but nonetheless, they're getting a chance to practice. So they might be practicing their literacy skills in a theater program or in a video program. They might be practicing their math skills in a cooking program or a sports program. They might be learning critical thinking skills in the chess club. And that's all about expanding learning opportunities. The other thing we do in community schools that I think is really, really important and again germane to the principles uh, espoused by the learning and after school movement is that we're removing barriers to children's learning and healthy development. I think that a school or a youth organization that wants to apply the very excellent principles of learning and after school, I think they might want to go principle by principle and do an assessment of how they're doing on each of the principles. And I would recommend doing that with a group of colleagues, not just having one person do that assessment. Because I think, first of all, we're modeling that principle of collaboration. But secondly, I think sometimes when we're looking at how we're doing in schools or youth organizations, there might be different points of view that we would want to consider. But I think that there is a lot of learning that's taken place in the, fi in the field of youth development as well as in the field of school reform. So there are lots of good ideas out there if in our practice we find that maybe we're not providing enough opportunities for mastery or we're not providing enough opportunities for collaboration. There are examples of good practice from all over the country and I think we're all learning from one another. I think there's really a lot of agreement about the skills that young people need if they're going to make it in productive adulthood. We know this from people like Richard Menane and Frank Levy who wrote a book called Teaching the New Basic Skills. We know this from the 21st Century Skills Partnership. There's a lot of agreement that yes, young people need good academic skills, particularly in math and literacy, but they also need to be able to work in groups in teams with people who might be different from themselves. They need good problem solving skills. They need critical thinking skills. They need good communication skills. And they need to be comfortable with technology. If young people are going to acquire all of these skills, I think the best thing for us to do is to take a look at the learning and after school principles and really apply those principles, whether we're working in the non-school hours or whether we're working in classrooms during the regular school day. We know what's needed and I think we know what it takes. Now we just really have to do it.